Hello my scholars, you welcome to my school YouTube channel. My name is Emmanuel and in today's video we'll be treating acid, bases and salt in chemistry. Please don't go anywhere, stick around and we'll be right back. You're welcome to my school YouTube channel. Like I said earlier on, we'll be looking at acid, bases, and salt in chemistry. Now, let's get down to it. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to give the different definitions of what acids are and what bases are. There are different definitions. We talk about Arrhenius, we talk about Brasted and Lowry, we talk about the Lewis. They have their definitions for what acids are and what bases are. At the end of this class, you should be able to give their definitions. Then we look at the all-encompassing definition for is we talk about classification of acids. How are acids classified? We're talking about acid based on their sources. We classify acid based on their strength. Okay? And we'll be talking about based on their concentration as well. we we'll also be looking at physical and chemical properties of acids. How do you identify acids when you see them physically? And then what chemical reactions do they undergo also? We'll be looking at laboratory preparation of acids and their uses. How do you prepare acids in the lab? Okay? Not industrial now. Laboratory preparation. We'll be looking at physical and chemical properties of bases as well. We look at acidity and alkalinity. How do we measure the level of acidity and alkalinity of substances? That talks about the pH scale, measuring the acidity and the alkalinity of substances from 0 to 14, the scale. We look at the color. We talk about the calculations also on pH and pOH. Let's move on to the next slide. We'll also be looking at the definition of salts. What are salts? We'll be looking at the types of salts. We'll be looking at the laboratory preparation of salts. We'll be looking at water of crystallization. And of course, we'll be talking about the calculations on water of crystallization. How do you calculate the amount of water that is found in salts? They will be looking at deliquescence, hygroscopy, and efflorescence. And finally, we'll be looking at drying agents and desiccators. Now, let's move on to the next slide. Different definitions have been given by different scientists or chemists, as we can see. The first person we'll be looking at is Arrhenius. We talk about the Arrhenius theory. Defines an acid as a substance that produces hydrogen ions when dissolved in an aqueous solution, like water. So when you dissolve a substance in water or an aqueous solution, if it produces hydrogen ion as its positive ion, we call that substance an acid. That was what Arrhenius gave about the definition of acids. Are. Then he went on to also talk about what bases are. That bases are substances, or a base is a substance that produces hydroxide ions. That is OH minus when dissolved in an aqueous solution. Okay? But the challenge with this definition, this Arrhenius theory of acid and base, is that it is limited only to aqueous solutions okay that is the limitation we have about this arrhenius theory of course many textbooks will still talk about or define acids as substances that produce hydrogen ion as only positive ion when dissolved in water and then also bases are substances that produces hydroxide ions when dissolved in aqueous solution or in water so it is still acceptable the only challenge we have with that is that the theory is limited only to aqueous solutions so okay that's the limitation that we have let's move on to look at the other definitions. Brasted Lowry theory, okay, looked at or viewed acid and bases from the perspective of proton donor and proton acceptor. It went on to define acid as a proton donor. Of course, when we talk about proton, we're talking about hydrogen ion, okay, because hydrogen we know that is having a valency of one okay and then having a valency of plus one so we say it says that an acid can be defined as a proton donor so when you look at a chemical equation and then you see a substance that is 
giving or that is donating a proton. Brosnan and Lowry actually defined that substance to be an acid and said the other one that is receiving, the recipient of that proton that is being donated is an acid. So define acid from perspective of proton donor and proton acceptor. Those that accept protons are said to be acid, while those that receive or accept the proton are what we call bases. But the advantage of this Bastard Lowry theory over the other one, which is the Arrhenius, is that the theory is broader because it does not require a substance to be in an aqueous solution as said by Arrhenius. Okay, and that explains why some substances without OH minus, that's hydroxide ion, can still act as bases, just like ammonia. We agree that ammonia is NH3. Ammonia does not have OH in the formula. So, literally, we could have said that does not act as a base because it does not have OH present, because it does not have OH in it. But because it fits in, it gives out, it accepts proton, okay? So, we can call it ammonia. That's why we refer to ammonia as a basic gas, okay? It's basic in nature. So, because it always will receive hydrogen ion, okay, from an acid okay so based on that this had more advantage brucellary advantage over that's the definition over the one by arrhenius arrhenius limited to aqueous solution alone while brucellary theory okay of definition of acid and basis is broader is more accommodating okay that even substances that are not negatively charged like the oh minus that are not having hydroxide ion present in them could also act as basis and acid once there is what proton acception and then proton donation okay for acid or from base so and also applies to a wider range of reactions let's move on to the next slide the third one is the Lewis theory the Lewis is looking at or defining acid and bases from the perspective of electron pair acception or acceptor or the electron pair donor. Remember, Brasilari was looking at uh, acid and, and bases from the perspective of proton donor and acception. But Lewis theory defined an acid to be an electron pair acceptor, while the base is an electron pair donor. So there is an electron pair donor that is said to be basis then the one that is accepting it's just like the opposite of what happens with the busted lowry remember acids are proton donor okay but in this case now acid are electron pair acceptor okay while bases are electron pair donor for lewis theory what is the advantage of this over the other one this is the most inclusive definition as it includes reactions that do not involve protons such as the reaction between a metal cation and an ammonia molecule. Normally, we know that ions or metals are all positively charged, okay? So we can have situations where we have calcium that is 2 plus having a valency of plus 2. And in that case now, you see that this definition now can tell us that, okay, electrons can either do what? Be given out by metals that are positively charged, that are rich in electrons, they have high electropositivity. So, they can give out electrons easily compared to the what their other counterparts that are electronegative substances. So, this definition is more encompassing, okay, and more, most inclusive definition when you compare it with Arrhenius or the one that is, was given by Busted Lowry. So, in, in nutshell, we are saying that acids, can also be said to be an electron pair acceptor while bases are electron pair donor. Let's move on to the next slide now. So, this summarizes it all about the three theory. Arrhenius is looking at acids as a substance that dissolves in water to produce hydrogen ion, right? While bases are substances that dissolve in water or in aqueous solution to produce what? Hydroxide ion at its only negatively charged ion. Why Borsellari was looking at acid as proton donors. Okay, proton donors are acidic while the bases are hydrogen ion. That's hydrogen ion which is proton, proton acceptors. Okay, bases we accept protons. Okay, that's why we have this. Why Lewis the final acid as electron pair acceptors. Okay, acids accept electron pair 
why bases accept pairs of electrons. They, they donate the uh, you know pair of electrons. Let's move on to the next slide. There are different examples, common examples of Arrhenius acid. Okay, we have hydrochloric acid. We have AC, of course. If you remember, Arrhenius is talking. If you dissociate this one in water, what happens? You are going to have this association. You are going to have hydrogen ion, then plus Cl minus hydrogen ion plus Cl minus. So, which means that this hydrogen becomes dissociated in water to give us what hydrogen ion as the positively charged ion so based on this this is one of the arrhenius principle if you look at this one also hno3 if we dissociate this we are going to have h plus here yeah then we have plus no3 minus of course hydrogen ion is dissociated in the solution and then we have hydrogen ion then plus no3 minus sulfuric acid also we dissociate in water in nuclear solution to give us hydrogen ion 2 but because we have two of that here so we have two h plus here and then we have so4 2 minus that is the valency of that so this is radical so we have two most of hydrogen ion that gets dissociated into this and on and on and on so if you keep on you have that then look at this okay if you have this arrhenius based examples include we have sodium hydroxide if you dissociate this you are going to have na dissociate this you are going to have na plus and then we have oh minus of course this is oh minus this is the hydroxide ion remember substances that dissociates in water that dissolves in aqueous solutions to give hydroxide ion as its negative charge ion are called bases so sodium hydroxide is one of the arrhenius bases common one potassium hydroxide the same thing if you dissociate this you are going to have potassium ion k plus and then we have oh minus so the oh minus is what is making it what arrhenius basis because it can dissociate and dissolve in water it separates that's what we mean by dissociating it separates it dissolves magnesium hydroxide the same thing happens here you have oh here minus here we have two moves of that on and on and on and on so these are common examples of arrhenius acids and these are common examples of the arrhenius basis now let's move on to the next slide Example of Vasted Lowry theory. We can have it here. We have acid here, HNO3. Of course, we said this is one of the common Arrhenius acid, but it is acid. Okay, it has HNO3, that's nitric acid. Then we have uh, ammonia, which is a base there. There's a reaction between this and this. Now, if you look at this very well, this hydrogen here, remember, Vasted Lowry was defining an acid as a proton donor. Okay, now this species here donate this hydrogen here this is one nh3 now this hydrogen is supplied is given out to this is donated to this guy here and then when it's donated to this ammonia the number of hydrogen increases from three becomes four okay so that's why we have it as nh4 you can see that here so this hydrogen has been donated to this ammonia the hydrogen has increased now from three to four so we have nh4 of course it's ionic so it becomes positively charged because it has been the one that has what that has accepted it has accepted the hydrogen ion and then it has have nh4 positive okay usually the one that is giving okay becomes positively charged when a metal or a substance give out electrons it becomes positively charged okay but because this is a compound so we have Positive. So if we have it, then we have NO3 will be left behind here. So that's why we have NO3 here. Minus. So we call that a conjugate base. Okay. Why this is the conjugate acid. So in a nutshell, what we are saying is that this species here donated one hydrogen. This is a proton now. Donated proton to this. So this is acting as an acid because acid, according to Boston Lowry, is that is any substance that can donate proton okay now this is donate proton the one that is accepting becomes the base so this is acid we are acting with base to give us conjugate acid and then we have conjugate bases okay look at it here if you have example another one is no3 reacting with this is a base too because we have oh here okay uh, now if you react this with this hydrogen here is being donated to this so this accepts this hydrogen and then the hydrogen increases from one to two so that's why we have ch3 o h2 
then positive charge. So we'll be left with CH. 3 OH2, then we left with NO3, we left here minus. So this is the conjugate acid, this is the conjugate base. So this is the acid, it's the one that is donating the proton, and then this is the base because it's the one that is accepting the proton. So this is acid, this is base, and this is a conjugate acid, and this is a conjugate base. Now we have come to the end of the preview. If you want to have access to the full video, please just click on the link in the description below that takes you to the my school website there you'll be able to have access to the full video and in the full video we'll be talking about the different classes of acids we have we'll be talking about organic and inorganic acids we'll be looking at strong acids and weak acids we'll be looking at concentrated and diluted acid we'll be looking at calculations on the ph we'll be looking at the physical and chemical properties of acids and the likes of them i hope you enjoyed this content if yes please don't forget to click on the like button hit the subscribe button and finally tap on the notification bell to keep you informed once we upload our next video